Welcome to Rev Hi-Fi. Uh, we're at episode 8, and um, as per normal, I'm going to do something different. And this time, we're not going to have it. We don't have a musician with us today. Uh, at the outset of the show, when I first started this, I wanted to have more than just musicians. I wanted to have local personalities, and I wanted to have other artists and filmmakers and the like. And uh, so today, I start that, and I start with one of my oldest and best friends, Mr. Chad Barker. How you doing, Chad? Very good, Michael. Thank you for having me on your show today. <laughs> this is lovely. <laughs> well, on today's show, what we're going to do, we're going to talk to Chad a little bit about his art, and then I'm going to review the Sanyo, one of my personal favorite. I get made fun of a lot for liking this receiver, but it's one of my favorite in my collection. And we're also going to review Tomahawk's newest LP, um, called Odd Fellows. So we'll take a listen to that, and I'll tell you all about it. Before we get to that, I want to talk to a little, uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, the work that you do. So um, you have, over the past what year, maybe? Uh, yeah, a little over a year. Now. A little over a year, you've kind of exploded mm-hmm. with uh, with a lot of output, a lot of a lot of paintings, a lot of uh, drawings, and the like. And to make matters even cooler. Um, you, not only are you prolific with your work, but you're also selling it at a, at a pretty, pretty high clip, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta tell you, Mike, it's been it's been really exciting, really cool, and really neat. Uh, not anything that I was expecting by any means. Uh, I, I guess it was a little over a year ago. I, I, I had an option to take a uh, an extra uh, credit for school, and they had a drawing class. And I thought, well, you know, years and years and years ago, back in the day, I used to draw, do it all the time, and have a lot of fun with yeah. it, and. As life goes on, you kind of forget these things, and you leave them where you left them. But, uh, the, the little drawing class I took really kind of opened it right back up to me, and uh, it, it's just been a, a whole lot of self-involved discovery from there on. Well, see, when I when I remember back when we were in high school, and you would do you do cartoons and silly stuff and, and strange stuff, but you never really took it seriously. And I guess you uh, took you know this art class at, at, at college. And that got you to take it a little bit more seriously. How did you make that transition from just because you obviously you have natural talent with with drawing and what have you? But what was the crossover from going from just being silly and being having fun with it to actually taking it seriously? What, what, what's that like? Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, second, you know, it's hard to explain. I look at it and I think that class made me take two days of the week and made me sit down for two three hours each night and made me do something. You know draw, doodle, whatever the hell. Uh, and really, that same mindset is where I took it. I said, if I'm going to keep doing this, and if I want to really get into it and explore it, I've got to keep doing it. And so I just made a point of it. If not every day, at least every other day, you got to sit down and just explore. Just find, you know, just do what you want to do with it. It sounds that that's, that, that's a great process. Right? Well, it, you know, yeah, I, 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 I hate talking about regrets, but that, that is the regret that it just took so long for it to come back. But, Life has a way of doing that to you sometimes. It, indeed it does. Mm-hmm. Indeed it does. Well, that's, that's, if anybody knows me, I do a lot of work, but I owe, I, 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 I don't charge it. I mean, I, I have a problem, actually, you know, like asking people <clears throat> to pay me when I do my work. Um, to me, it's, it's very difficult. So, I mean, do you... Do you, do you how do you come to that? Where do you, where do you go to actually put a price on, you know, on, I, on your work? I feel the same way, because a lot of the times I'm just selling these pieces to buddies of mine. You know, old friends, new friends, whatever. And the last thing I want to do is, is, is uh, you know, rip them off or feel guilty about a sale or something like that. So I, I seriously look at it, and I, I've talked to some of my friends who, who are artists that have lived off their artwork. And uh, the, the formula I've come up with is I, check, I take my supplies and multiply it by two, and then 20 bucks an hour. And, you know, that does not count all the mess up times either because, you know, these things don't happen the first go around on every canvas. So if I white it out, then I start the time back over again. So, uh, you know, sometimes I can look at something and, and look at somebody and be like, yeah, then, you know, and that'll work out with what they want to pay. Or they might tell me what they want to spend, and I'll be like, oh, I certainly won't put it over that for you, you know. So, right. But again, I don't, I don't do, you know, I don't take ideas and do commissions and things like that. I, I just paint what I want to paint or draw what I want to draw and then just, if, if other people like it, then... Put it out there absolutely. if somebody wants it. And they gotta, they got to take a little bit of your heart and a little bit of your soul. they got to give you a little uh, bit of cash. I get well, that. It makes sense. And that's, that's uh, the way it should be. Man. And, and it's, I agree it's, with that. It's a huge benefit uh, having all these social networking sites, uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, which I'm on both. Uh, and there's a lot of other artists that I see, especially on Instagram, that... Inspire me every single day. Tell me a little bit about your inspirations. Uh, well, you know, uh, there's a couple of them that live right here in Oklahoma City. Uh, working out of my favorite tattoo shop over there, Cannibal Graphics. 
uh, you know, Josh Reynolds, Kyle Miller, uh, Curtis Fletcher, Bob Benin. I, I love those guys. Uh, there, there's other guys that I've come to know off of Instagram. Uh, Glenn Arthur is one of my favorites. Uh, oh, there's another feller, uh, JTP. Uh, JTP Art. Don't know his real name because Instagram, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's super cool to be able to get on there every day and, and look at what everybody else is pumping out and say, you know what, I need to take some time and, and sit down and do something myself. Indeed, indeed, that makes sense. Well, uh, w w you know, before we get too detailed and get too far, I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to go ahead and uh, review the receiver here. Are you into the old high five stuff at all? You know, I, I think I, I, I love him personally. I, I couldn't sit here and fix up on it or, or uh, you know, tell you how it works and everything, but I, I can't. I can tell you how to hook it up and, and make some sweet sound, though. Well, you, I, I've been telling you for years since you got into records that you need to get into some of these. But right now, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to uh, review the Sanyo JCX 2300K. It's one of my favorites. Stay tuned. The Sanyo JCX 2300K. Like I said earlier, I get made fun of a lot for liking this receiver. I talk to other collectors, and I even mention the word Sanyo, and most of them just roll their eyes. I mean, I get it. The brand doesn't scream quality, and I would never, ever waste my money on a modern Sanyo product. But I picked this receiver up for next to nothing, and mainly because it was pretty. I mean, I really didn't expect much out of it. I hooked it up in my living room setup because I never turned that up very loud. And the speakers I was using at the time, they were old 60s Sherwood Berkshires that never quite sounded as good as I'd ever hoped they would. But I hooked it up to this. And as I do with every new stereo I pick up, I put on Rush's Moving Pictures, and man, I was shocked. That Sanyo made those Sherwoods come alive in a way I didn't think was possible. So I got excited. I hooked it up to my Norman Labs 332s. Jeez. Wow. Finally, I hooked it up to my Sansui SP Z92s, and that's what sold me. No other receiver that I have, including the Marantz, brought out the majesty that these, of these speakers, quite like this little Sanyo could. It's rated at 55 watts, has a phono, two tapes, and an auxiliary input, and it's one of the prettiest receivers I have, and is far and away the most underrated. If you find one, I bet it's cheap, so grab it when you see it. The Sanyo JCX 2300K. All right, uh, so, so Chad, why don't you, uh, could you tell me a little bit about your process? I mean, you know, uh, not start to finish, but, you know, when you look at a blank canvas, what happens? Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's different from, from every canvas because, uh, like I was saying earlier, there, there's sometimes that I just have an idea click, and I look at a canvas and I know I can make it happen, and I sit down and, and it comes out just the way it's supposed to. Uh, there's other times where I just maybe pick a few colors and think, let's just keep things limited on my palette and start with a background and maybe see what happens. Have you got any good examples? Of that? Uh, sure. Uh, this robot painting in front, if you want to take a look at it real quick. Sure. Uh, you know, this is this is one of these that kind of show off the, the sort of different style that I like to try to put out. I, I like using these warm colors and, and having something in the middle that is not necessarily explainable, but, you know, draws your attention to it. Uh, now with a painting like this, I just start with background first. Uh, using acrylics, it's the best way that I've found. I'm not that good with, you know, drawing a line and then keeping everything in the line. Yeah. I just try to do everything off freehand. Uh, so you come in here, you fill in your sky, and then you start with your background layers. And I've just got a couple of different, you know, colors going from light to dark to just to show some depth. And, uh, you know, when I started on the robot, it was, uh, I blocked him out using white and just kind of, I, I, I'll use little reference pictures from time to time. You know, I might find something off the internet or something around the house that kind of give me a better idea of where an arm goes or where an eye goes. <laughs> and you'll block it in and you just kind of start building layers on top of that, you know. So why a robot? Uh, well, well I, you know, before before you tell me that, I mean, I like the idea here. You got you got a really organic like box, like man made box that's that's old and antique. You have you know a good selection of nature with the bird and the mountains and and the obvious natural lighting, and then a robot. Mm -hmm. well, Why is that? Well, is there a purpose behind that? I or? like the sort of confusingness of this particular painting because, like you said, it seems like with the box and with the bird, it, it's almost a realistic uh, place to be. But you throw in the, the colors and the, and the landscape and you think, well, maybe I feel like I'm a, on another planet even. And so I felt like the robot kind of fit in there. Now, as, as far as his gesture and, and then the bird, it, it's hard for me to explain where this stuff comes from. <laughs> you know, I, I think at this time I was listening to a lot of Tool, you know, and that'll, that'll happen. Like, uh, it'll be different bands that I'm listening to or maybe something I've just watched or 
or taken in, and those kind of things uh, have a way of influencing you without you even knowing. Are you what you up? You brought a record with you today. Yes, I did. What record did you bring with you? I brought you the new Tomahawk album, my friend. And you want to tell me just a tiny little bit about that before I take well, a listen to it? It's going to be a little biased because I'm a bit of a homer. I love me some Mike Patton. As do as, uh, as, as anybody with the good sense of... <laughs> and, and the thing that I've always loved about Mike Patton is that although he spreads himself throughout all these different bands, anytime you hear those different bands, you know which band it is. And uh, when I picked up the Tom Hawk album and started jamming it, it's almost like you, just relief that yes, it's a Tom Hawk album. Tom Hawk. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of an edgier rock sound. It, it can be kind of rough and violent at times. But, you know, if you're at all a little bit of a fan of A Faith No More or a little bit of a fan of some of his other works, you know, you've got to check it out because it's Mike Patton and it's him doing what he does best. All right. Well, I can't wait to take a listen to it. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take a good, hard, solid listen to it. I'm going to go really hard on it because Mike Patton is, like, way up here. Mm-hmm. He has a standard mm-hmm. he's got to meet. And well, uh, we know you. You like to go hard on anything. Yeah, I'm. I'm so hard on my reviews. <laughs> anyway, stick your hard on. <laughs> all right, stick around. I'll tell you all about it. To be honest, I've been very lazy keeping up with Mike Patton lately. I mean, I loved Faith and More back in the 90s, and I mean, loved them. And I was introduced to Mr. Bungle when I was a freshman in high school. Back then, I didn't get it. But in 1999, while, while home on leave from South Korea, my good friends Chad Barker and Eric Roberts demanded that I listen to Mr. Bungle's California. I did, and bam. No longer was I just a Faith No More fan, but I counted myself amongst the legions of Mike Patton fanboys. I couldn't get enough of his work, or anything he touched for that matter. He comes off as kind of a uh, heavy metal mad scientist. I mean, I wish I had a better way to describe him, but ask any of his fans. The man is undefinable. But while doing research for this review, I I took a look at Patton's discography. Holy crap, it's intimidating. I mean, soundtracks for both movies and video games, five different bands, a ton of collaborations, etc., etc., etc. And because of that, it's not easy to tell someone what they should check out to get into this madman's work. Well, aside from the obvious faith, no more. But I would argue that if it's Mike Patton you're interested in, don't start there. Normally I would say Mr. Bungle's California, but that record goes pretty far out into the stratosphere of weird for most people. Now, I think this record, Tomahawk's latest, Oddfellows, is now what I'll be recommending. Not because it's his best work, because honestly it's not. No, more of what it is, is Patton's signature nuttiness wrapped in an easy-to-swallow hard rock album. It sounds to me maybe what a Faith No More album would sound like if it were released today. It doesn't reach the fever pitch zenith of reality and genre bending that, Mike, that makes Mike Patton's other efforts so amazing, but it does rock and still has enough of his experimental tendencies to remind you who is piloting the ship. Don't misunderstand me. I really like this record. It's solid and has the craftsmanship and obvious love put into it that Patton always delivers on. And again, if you want a gateway into his world, you couldn't do much better than this record. But if you're already a patent junkie, this album is a fix that'll give you what you need. Just don't expect the massive, layered, and strange journey that the master Mike Patton usually delivers. Other than that, crank it up, piss off the neighbors. I did, and it was well worth it. Alright, well thanks for hanging out with me again. Um... Stick around next week. We're going to do something very, very special, something near and dear to my heart. We're going to have one of the first Oklahoma City rock acts that really made me fall in love with the local scene here, and that is the infamous and legendary Spooky Fruit. Spooky Fruit? I've heard of Spooky Fruit. Yeah, and? Yeah. Good music. Cheap as hell. The lead singer, Sean, owes me $25. I'll do my best to... Hey! Don't forget about $25. <laughs> All right. Well, like I said, tune in next week. Oh, well, real quick. You want to tell us one more time? Where we oh, yeah. All right. You, you can find all my art and zanias at Chad Bark Art on Instagram and Chad Barker Art on Facebook. All right. Well, check that out. I'll put links to it down in the description. Um, please check it out. It's good stuff. Anyway, we'll see you next week with the Spooky Fruit. Take it easy. Thanks, Chad. Thank you, Mike. All right. <laughs> Hi. I'm a little otter. You want a little hand? A little otter hand? Uh.
gonna swim on my back and I do cute human things with my hands. And I'm an otter. But sometimes.